Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I'm going to discuss an idea which the Washington Post describes as progressive. In 1975, the National Academy of Sciences said, the climates of the Earth have always been changing, and they will doubtless continue to do so in the future. How large these future changes will be, and where and how rapidly they will occur, we do not know. But the Washington Post has an idea for how to stop the last 600 million years of climate change. It's a carbon tax which forces the price of all fossil fuels upwards. The Washington Post says this idea is progressive because people can make their own choices about which fossil fuels not to use. They've been trying this experiment in Germany, where electricity is now considered to be a luxury. Poor people in Germany now get to make the very progressive choice between keeping their house warm or feeding their children. And middle class people in Germany can now make the choice between paying their electricity bill or taking the family vacation. Wow, what a progressive idea by the Washington Post. During my lifetime, the Washington Post has always had two ideas which they believe could solve all problems. One of the fix-all ideas of the Washington Post has always been to raise taxes, regardless of what the problem was. The other fix-all idea of the Washington Post, for as long as I can remember, has always been to impeach Republican presidents. It doesn't actually matter what the problem is, but the Washington Post tells us that one or both of those solutions will fix it. And at the top of this article, they have a picture of some very dirty-looking smokestacks. It's difficult to tell what we're looking at. Is it fog, steam, pollution? It's hard to tell. But one thing we can see is the caption. It says that the photograph was taken in China. So apparently the Washington Post believes that making Americans pay more for energy will reduce pollution in China. They don't really elaborate in the article on how this works. The reason that they used pictures from a Chinese power plant is because American power plants are very clean. This is my local power plant outside of Boulder, Colorado. It burns natural gas and is incredibly clean. The other large source of electricity in northern Colorado is the Rawhide power plant north of Fort Collins. This power plant burns coal, and like the one here in Boulder, it puts out no visible pollutants. Photographs of American power plants don't make for good propaganda for the Washington Post, so they use ones from China instead. Now let's look at who actually uses coal. China and India use a lot more coal than the rest of the world put together. The United States uses about one-eighth as much coal as China and India. The United States could literally drop off the face of the earth and would have almost no impact on coal consumption around the world. Yet the Washington Post wants to raise energy prices for Americans. The only thing that would accomplish would be to make Americans poor, make American goods more expensive, and put China and India at a competitive advantage. In 2008, Barack Obama proposed a similar plan for the United States. He said he wanted to make electricity prices skyrocket for Americans. Under my plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Even, you know, regardless of what I say about whether coal is good or bad, because I'm capping greenhouse gases, coal power plants, you know, natural gas, you name whatever the plants were, whatever the industry was, they would have to uh, retrofit their operations. That will cost money. They will pass that money on to consumers. Michael Bloomberg is attempting to implement Obama's plan. Bloomberg is spending $500 million in an attempt to quickly shut down the existing U.S. energy infrastructure. We used to worry about terrorists taking out power plants or taking down power lines, but Al-Qaeda doesn't need to worry about this now because we have prominent Americans attempting to do the same thing, but on a much larger scale. Note that Bloomberg is not spending the $500 million to invest in new technology which would replace the coal but rather he's spending the money to shut down our existing infrastructure, which we all depend on for our day-to-day -day survival. So why isn't Bloomberg investing in green energy research? Barack Obama tried that when he was president. He invested huge amounts of money in dozens of green energy companies, and every single one of them failed. Obama gave more than $500 million of your money to Solyndra, which of course failed. So Bloomberg knows better than to make that same mistake. America's enemies must be having a fantastic time watching this drama unfold. 
We are very rich and powerful people inside the United States who are working hard to destroy our energy infrastructure. Another very rich person in the United States is Bill Gates, who started the company Microsoft. He knows a little bit about technology and says that the cost of switching over to wind and solar would be astronomical. And he points out these specific problems with wind and solar power. Gates said renewables were far from capable in their current form of capturing projected growth in energy use by 2030. He cited solar power as an example. Solar is only during the day. Solar only works best in places where it's warm. We don't have perfect grids. We don't have storage. There's no battery technology that's even close to allowing us to take all of our energy from renewables. Gates said, power is about reliability. We need to get something that works reliably. Now compare this to what Obama and Bloomberg were saying. Obama and Bloomberg simply want to shut down our existing energy infrastructure without anything to replace it with. Here's an article from Bloomberg. Sometimes a greener grid means a 40,000% spike in power prices. Texas power prices jumped from less than $15 to as much as $9,000 a megawatt hour this month as coal plant retirements and weak winds left the region on the brink of blackouts during a heat wave. Germany averted three blackouts of its own in June. In the UK, more than a million homes lost power on August 9th, in part because a wind farm tripped offline. A new report says that renewables threaten German economy and energy supply. A new report by consulting giant McKinsey finds that Germany's energy transition to renewables poses a significant threat to the nation's economy and energy supply. One of Germany's largest newspapers summarized the findings of the McKinsey report in a single word, disastrous. Progressive filmmaker Michael Moore has a new movie out called Planet of the Humans. When they started making the movie, their intent was to promote green energy. But they said it turned out that the wake-up call was about our own side. It was kind of crushing to discover that the things I believed in weren't real, first of all, and then to discover not only are the solar panels and wind turbines not going to save us, but also that there's this whole dark side of the corporate money. It dawned on me that these technologies were just another profit center. It's good to see some progressives finally waking up as to what's actually going on. But they should have been able to figure this out during the Obama administration when all of those green energy companies failed. Where did all of those billions of dollars which Obama spent on green energy go? His green energy companies were basically a scam to transfer taxpayer money into the hands of his donors. Wind and solar power is not going to meet America's needs. And it's not going to do anything to help the climate. We don't have to speculate what the climate would be like at low CO2 levels. We have huge amounts of historical evidence from when CO2 levels were much lower. Let's take a look, for example, at the 1920s. This week in 1926, Cuba was ravaged by a hurricane. That hurricane left 600 dead, 3,000 hurt, and upward of 25,000 homes damaged. One month earlier, Miami was destroyed by a hurricane. The New York Times reported 1,000 dead in Florida storm, 3,000 hurt, Miami worst hit. 60 mile wide swath of destruction leaves 38,000 homeless. Scores of towns are razed or flooded, shipping wrecked. Inflation adjusted, the 1926 Miami hurricane was the most expensive natural disaster in U.S. history. This map shows the path of the damage from the 1926 hurricane. As you can see, it was massive. This is what Miami looked like from the air after the hurricane. As you can see, the city was almost completely destroyed. For some reason, though, in 1926, CNN was not there on the scene with 24-7 coverage. This is what downtown Miami looked like under 10 feet of water. This is how the U.S. Weather Bureau described the hurricanes from 1926. Nature on rampage in air this year with hurricanes. Destructive, misbehaving winds have not followed due paths in 1926. This is a year of freakish movements for hurricanes, so said George Bliss, meteorologist of the United States Weather Bureau. Not only freakish in movement, but most unusually destructive have this year's hurricanes been, declared Mr. Bliss. It's as if Mother Nature had gone on the rampage. 
The horrible hurricanes of 1926 were blamed by scientists on giant sunspots. It isn't completely clear to me how building windmills will stop giant sunspots from forming on the sun. The Red Cross described the year 1926-1927 as being the worst disaster year in Red Cross history. The Red Cross reported 111 disasters that year. One of those disasters was the worst flooding in U.S. history along the Mississippi River. The floods lasted for more than six months and permanently changed America's demographics. Hundreds of thousands of descendants of slaves who had homesteaded along the Mississippi River were forced to abandon their homes and move to northern cities. But that was just the beginning. St. Louis was largely destroyed by a tornado in 1927. Vermont also had their largest flood on record in 1927. The flood on the Winooski River destroyed more than 1,000 bridges and killed the lieutenant governor. In 1925, the worst tornado in U.S. history occurred. It killed more than 1,000 people and left 3,000 injured over multiple states. Dozens of towns in the Midwest were destroyed. 1923 through 1924 brought the world's record heat wave to Australia. Marble Bar, West Australia, had 160 consecutive days over 100 degrees. And 1922 brought Africa's record heat wave. Zinder, Niger, had 123 consecutive days above 100 degrees Fahrenheit from March 7, 1922 to July 7 of that year. During that four-month period, their afternoon temperatures averaged 113 degrees Fahrenheit. And before data tampering by NOAA, 1921 was the hottest year on record in Texas. And it was the second hottest year on record across the entire United States. 1921 also brought some of the worst flooding on record to the United States. Three floods in Pueblo, Colorado in June that year killed 1,500 people. And then that flooding on the Arkansas River spread out over Kansas and did huge amounts of damage there. In 1921, the New York Times said, Earth has a fever, the identical words which Al Gore used many years later. There's no historical basis to the belief that lower CO2 levels will bring us better weather. That's strictly a superstition. And there's no reason to believe that lower CO2 levels will stop the Arctic from melting. In 1923, it was reported that the North Pole was melting, many glaciers had vanished, and scientists were wondering if the North Pole was going to melt entirely. Reports from fishermen, seal hunters, and explorers who sail the seas around Spitsbergen and the Eastern Arctic all point to a radical change in climatic conditions with hitherto unheard of high temperatures on that part of the Earth's surface. And in 1923, scientists reported that glaciers in Glacier National Park were disintegrating and predicted that they would be gone by 1948. There's nothing progressive about destroying America's energy infrastructure. There's nothing progressive about making energy unavailable or too expensive for poor people. And there's no reason to believe that engaging in such insane, self-destructive behavior will do anything to improve the climate. These people need to be exposed and shut down. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.